In relation to human evolution in Australia, we have made a video on the discovery of Mungo Man and Mungo Lady and their relation to the Aboriginals. In this video, we will be covering the footprints that our ancestors left in this continent. Mungo National Park in western New South Wales is home to the oldest known cremation in the world, Mungo Lady's remains, and the oldest known ritual burial in the world, Mungo Man's ochre-covered skeleton. Now its sands have given up another world-class treasure, more than 500 fossilized human footprints, the biggest collection ever found. The shifting sands of time have revealed Australia's earliest human footprints, giving a glimpse of life at the height of the last ice age. In 2003, well-preserved tracks were discovered on the clay pan of Lake Mango, although some of the local Aboriginal people have stated they knew about the tracks before this time. There are approximately 700 fossilized footprints, 457 of them grouped in a set of 23 tracks. At tens of thousands of years old, this find is the largest group of human footprints from the Pleistocene era ever found. Most of these are human footprints, although there are some kangaroo and emu tracks. These footprints are about 20,000 years old, having been left in the last ice age during the Pleistocene period. Ancient Australians walked across the clay pan whilst it was damp. When it dried, it set like concrete, preserving their footprints. Archaeologist Dr. Matthew Kappa says a young woman by the name Mary Papin Jr. of the Muthi people found the footprints in August 2003 while exploring the area with team member Professor Steve Webb of Bond University on Queensland's Gold Coast as part of a project to educate young Aboriginal people in archaeology. Miss Papin said walking alongside the footprints was like walking with a family group today. They're the same people. Kappa says that it is quite remarkable as they haven't found any footprints from the Pleistocene in Australia before. He says the group likely included men up to 1.8 meters tall, running as fast as 37 kilometers an hour, as well as young children ambling along at 3 or 5 kilometers an hour. The tracks discovered include some particularly interesting tracks of a child. The child had a foot about 15 centimeters in length and meandered in the opposite direction to the group. The archaeologist studying the footprints commented, I quote, The footprints and straight lengths show how the child walked, paused, turned and ran away from the group they were with, before walking briskly back towards them. Perhaps the child was called back by an adult or older sibling. So seldom in open site archaeology do we see such a personal and familiar signature, say archaeologists Harvey Johnston and Michael Westaway. Another group of footprints was made by a fast moving group, likely men, who were running after prey. The Pintubi people identified the track of where a spear missed its target and skidded into the ground. These tracks are accompanied by a single line of deep right foot only footprints and is identified by the Pintubi as a one legged man hopping along with the group. The speed of these footprints indicate he was practiced at hopping, revealing it was not a temporary injury. Others think he may have had it propelling himself along with the other through shallow water. Overall, among the images they evoke are children milling around their parents' ankles. One hunter was running at 23 miles, which is 37 kilometers an hour, or as fast as an Olympic sprinter. Mud squelching between his bare toes, and a dead animal being dragged along the shore of a lake. This is the nearest we've got to a prehistoric film, where you can see someone's heel slip in the mud as they're running fast, said Steve Webb. Now you would ask, how did these footprints survive for so long? Like most fossils, very particular circumstances had to come together to preserve the footprints. The clay pan is about 15 centimeters thick and composed of thin layers, a type of magnesite rich clay that is not common in the Wallandra Lakes area. The clay was probably blown out of the nearby lake basin in dry periods. When this clay dries out, it sets very hard like concrete. But even if the tracks had been out in the wind and rain for too long, they would have been eroded away. 
so it is likely that they were covered over soon after being made by dune sands blowing in from the west in the barren, windy climate of the Pleistocene. It was the covering sand that protected the tracks for most of those 20,000 years before being partly blown away again in recent years. That is why sand was used again in 2006 to cover the tracks for protection. The footprints have been carefully covered over with a bed of sand to protect them from exposure to the elements and the risk of erosion. The footprints are highly fragile and are no longer accessible to researchers. Before the footprints were covered up, electronic scans of the footprints were taken by a surveyor. These scans were used to create polystyrene molds of the imprints and concrete tiles of the footprint impressions. These concrete tiles can then be displayed while the footprints themselves remain covered. In a deeper research, Steve Webb said the use of ground-penetrating radar had shown six different clay surfaces beneath the dune which might contain up to 2,500 footprints. Others believe the footprints still to be revealed may number as high as 5,000. Whether the additional footprints exist is hypothetical but tantalizing. Dr. Webb said new footprints could help scientists and others trace of the people who had left the existing tracks. He said, for instance, there's a group of six hunters. He'd like to know where they ran to or if they came together at one place and if there's footprints of an animal or whatever they were after. He says, there's the family that walked across, four children and an adult. They disappear under the sand. Now where were they going? The one-legged man. Will he eventually pick up the stick that he might be using or carrying, which we can't at the moment? There could even be a skeleton of an extinct animal. We just don't know. With all the unanswered questions though, researchers say that the footprint site widens our perceptions of a past society more graphically than other forms of archaeological study. It also presents an added dimension to our understanding of the morphology and physical capabilities of Pleistocene humans. The footprints will stay there until scientists and Aboriginal community members devise a plan to protect the ancient tracks. As part of the plan, tribes people want to erect community and educational centres near the site and develop related ecotourism. They also hope to build a keeping place or sacred shelter to safeguard the footprints of their ancestral families. And with that, we have come to the end of the video. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it. For more videos like these, check our channel out and please do not forget to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. Till then, this is Halabella and see you soon in our next video.